In order to graph the reciprocal function of a linear equation, the first thing you should do is graph the original equation. So my first step is graph the original equation. Now my original equation is going to be the denominator y equals negative 3x plus 6. So I'm going to start the function at positive 6 and I'm going to have a slope of negative 3, so I'm going to go down 3 over 1, down 3 over 1, down 3 over 1, and so on. So now I'm going to have my linear function drawn. To get the reciprocal function, I need to figure out a couple things. So the first thing I need to figure out is the vertical asymptote. And the asymptote is going to be the line that my function can never equal to. So it's an artificial line that x is not going to be able to be in order to make this equation. So my vertical asymptote is going to be where my denominator is 0. So 3x plus 6 is equal to 0. That's going to be where I'm going to have my vertical asymptote. Now I can figure this out graphically because it's always going to be the x-intercept because that's where my y value is going to be 0. So my vertical asymptote in this case is going to go through x equals 2. And if I substitute x equals 2 into my equation, I would get negative 6 plus 6, which would give me a denominator of 0, which we know can't happen. So that's my vertical asymptote. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the horizontal asymptote. And this horizontal asymptote is going to be what y cannot equal. And in this case, y cannot equal 0 because there's no way using that equation to get y equal to 0. So the horizontal asymptote is always y equals 0. So I'm going to have another asymptote going through y equals 0. Now the last thing I'm going to have is I'm going to have the invariant points. And invariant points are points that are going to be part of the reciprocal gra graph and part of the original function. And these two points always happen in the same place. They're always going to happen at y equals 1 and y equals negative 1. Now I could calculate them using my original equation. All I would have to do is go 1 equals 3x or negative 3x plus 6. Take away 6 on both sides. I get negative 5 equals negative 3x, which is going to give me x equals 5 over 3, which turns out it's going to be that point right there. I could also do this for negative 1. Negative 3x plus 6. Take away 6 on both sides. I get negative 7 equals negative 3x, which means x equals 7 over 3. And that's going to be that point right there. Now I could just draw these on the graph. I could look at the graph and look at where does x equal or y equal 1 and where does y equal negative 1. Now to finish my graph, I'm going to start at the asymptote. It's going to go along the asymptote up to the invariant point, through the invariant point, over to the other asymptote. Now it's never going to cross the asymptote. It's going to get as close as it can to it, but it's never actually going to cross it. And it's the same thing on the other side. So that's what the graph of 1 over negative 3x plus 6 looks like. Let's look at another one. So here we have y equals 1 over x minus 3. I'm going to start the same way I started the last one. I'm going to start at my y-intercept. I've got a slope of 1. So I'm going to go up 1 and over 1. So I've got my original graph. So this is my graph of y equals x minus 3. And I can connect the lines to make it easier for myself. Now I need to determine my asymptotes. I'm always going to have an asymptote at 0. So here's my asymptote going through at y equals 0. And I'm also going to have an asymptote at my x-intercept. So I'm going to have an asymptote going through at x equals 3. And I could check that in my equation. 3 minus 3 is going to give me 0. So that is where this equation is no longer valid. My next step is to find my invariant points. Now invariant points are always at y equals 1. So I go over in the y equals 1 until I hit my graph. So one invariant point is going to be right there. I'm going to do the same thing at negative 1. 
I'm going to go over to my graph and draw my invariant point. Now I can draw in my function. It's going to go up to the invariant point and over to the other asymptote. Start at the asymptote. Go all the way over to my invariant point and through to the other asymptote. Another way we could ask is if we already have our reciprocal function and we want to graph the normal function. So what we need here is I need to know which points are going to be part of both functions. So I can start with my invariant points. At positive 1, I'm going to have a point, and at negative 1, I'm going to have a point. Now the other place where there is going to be a point on my original graph is going to be at the intersect of the um, asymptote because that's going to be my x-intercept. Now I've got three points, I can easily connect them. And that would be the for function that was my original function of f of x. So if the red is 1 over f of x, the black is just y equals f of x.